So my name is Olivia. I'm a grants associate with Rural Health Professions Action Plan, or RPAP. I work exclusively on BN, and you'll likely hear from me if you have any BN-related questions or if you decide to apply for the bursary. I'm also joined today by my colleague, Lindsay, who leads our strategy and stakeholders team here at RPAP. Uh, jumping into things, as you may already know, BN is intended to provide funding to internationally educated nurses, or IENs, as they complete the bridging training required to practice as an LPN or RN in Alberta. This funding includes assistance with tuition and fees, living expenses, and a fixed incentive, and it's offered in exchange for a period of time spent working in rural Alberta, which we will cover in more detail shortly. Before moving forward, it is important to distinguish that RPAP is the BN program administrator, but the program is actually funded by the government of Alberta. So while you may apply for BN through RPAP and correspond with us throughout your return and service agreement, the standards and guidelines for the program are set out by the government of Alberta, including which bridging programs are eligible for BN and the maximum bursary amounts. So after a very successful first cycle where all funds were allocated to BN recipients, we are pleased to share that we are currently accepting applications for cycle two of BN, which opened in December of last year. A significant change to note in the current cycle compared to the first is the addition of McEwen University to the list of our approved post-secondary bridging programs. So McEwen joins Norquest, Mount Royal, and Bow Valley from the previous cycle. Uh, regarding Bow Valley though, you may notice there's an asterisk beside the name on the screen. Uh, we do want to acknowledge that Bow Valley has decided to pause intake for their bridging program as of the fall 2024 term and going forward for future terms. However, any current Bow Valley bridging students are still welcome to apply for BN. And for the time being, Bow Valley will continue to be listed on our website as an approved program, but new or prospective students won't be able to apply to the school for future terms. So that being said, uh, cycle two applications will be accepted on a first come first serve basis. Uh, that's until June 30th or whenever our funding is exhausted, whichever occurs first. We do recommend applying for BN as early as possible once you've enrolled in one of the approved bridging programs and meet the other eligibility requirements such as Alberta residency. So a really great way to kick off today's session is with a brief overview of the BN program, which can be simplified into four stages. There's the application, the return and service agreement, completion of the bridging program, and finally professional licensing and rural employment. So once you've applied via the application portal on our website and, and your application is approved, your uh, BN recipients will then receive a return and service agreement for signature. Also called a RISA, the return and service agreement is a contractual agreement between the recipient, RPAP, and the government of Alberta, and it outlines the responsibilities and expectations for all parties. From the recipient's point of view, it details the expectations of a student completing the bridging program including what it means to complete the program in good standing and situations that would lead the recipient to default on the agreement. Referenced in that fourth step, it also outlines the expectations of, a, of the recipient to secure professional licensing and role employment within six months of completing the bridging program. During that six month period, recipients are provided time to get their licensing in order and secure employment in any of the BN eligible communities that list of eligible communities is quite extensive and is included in both the final pages of your RISA and on our website. So once the return and service agreement is fully signed, the first of two BN disbursements will be issued directly to the recipient's bank account. The first payment is issued upon signing the return and service agreement, and it consists of a $3,500 fixed incentive and 50% of each the tuition and living expense support. The second disbursement will be issued upon uh, confirmed completion of the bridging program or within 12 months of that first payment, whichever occurs first, and that payment will consist of the other 50% of each the tuition and living expense support. So, of course, one of the main questions we get is regarding eligibility, and there are several criteria that we look for, and they're included on this screen. So overall, uh, BN recipients must be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident or protected person, or hold a valid study permit or visa. Uh, to that end, recipients must also hold a valid Canadian SIN in order to receive the bursary. As well, they must be an internationally educated nurse who is currently enrolled in an approved bridging program. 
Again, that's at Mount Royal, Bow Valley, Norquest, or McEwen. In full-time continuous studies starting January 1st, 2023 or later. They must currently live in and be a resident of Alberta. And finally, be willing to sign a return and service agreement to work in a BN eligible rural community following the completion of the bridging program. Here, it is really important to note that BN recipients are able to choose from the list of approved communities. We do not select the community for you. The return and service period also varies by applicant, but can be up to 54 months, depending on the bursary amount that is received. Uh, the return and service calculation remains the same for all applicants, regardless of their post-secondary institution, and that is one year of service in a rural community for every $6,000 of bursary received, but that calculation does not include the 3,500 non-repayable fixed incentive. So as a BN recipient, it is very important to understand your responsibilities, which center around the successful completion of the uh, successful completion of the post-secondary bridging program and securing rural employment with the, within the agreed upon timeframes. So once a recipient's BN application is approved, RPAP maintains contact with the post-secondary institutions to ensure all recipients are maintaining good standing. Recipients are also required to keep RPAP up to date on their situation, including letting us know about changes to their personal information, like your mailing address, uh, their academic progress, and when they have secured professional licensing and post bridging program employment. It is important to note that adequate employment can be one full time position or multiple part time positions, as long as one full time equivalent of 30 hours per week is met. And that can be met through a combination of public or private providers. Um, but to be very clear, RPAP is not involved in the hiring process and securing employment is the recipient's responsibility. We are happy to share resources and contacts, but ultimately the recipient must secure their own rural employment in any of the BN eligible communities listed. Another point we wanted to mention on this slide is compassionate consideration. So we understand that life happens and sometimes situations arise or change as a BN recipient, if you or your immediate family members experience a change in personal circumstance and you require a temporary leave or extension, you can submit a request for compassionate consideration to RPAP. RPAP and the government of Alberta will then re review each request on a case-by-case -case basis. However, it is important to note that recipients must return to school or work after their approved break, that compassionate consideration cannot exceed eight weeks, and that it must be communicated to us prior to the, to the leave occurring. Um, a final point to reiterate here is a, just another request to be, keep in contact with us. Um, from our point of view, we want to see you be successful and it's important that we are kept up to date. We can't offer potential solutions unless we are aware. And oftentimes we can't offer assistance if we find out about the situation or the issue after the fact. So please, if you are a BN recipient, please keep in contact with us and reach out. Uh, we can always be reached by email at the BN inbox, which is bn at rpap.ca. So default and repayment. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the BN return and service agreement outlines the expectations of all parties and includes situations that would lead the, the recipient to default on the agreement. Some examples that would result in the recipient defaulting include not enrolling in continuous full-time study, not maintaining good standing with your post-secondary institution, withdrawing from the bridging program, not completing the program in the expected amount of time, failing to maintain a valid SIN or study permit, or failing to secure and maintain professional licensing and rural employment within six months of completing the bridging program and for the duration of the return and service period. So if a BN recipient defaults on the agreement, then RPAP will provide a letter that outlines the amount of funding that needs to be repaid, as well as a timeline for repayment. Recipients are provided six months to repay the amount owed, otherwise the file will be transferred to the Government of Alberta's Crown Debt Collections. It is important to note that your BN bursary only continues to be interest-free during that six-month period following the default. If your file is forwarded to Crown Debt Collections, your BN debt will collect interest and will appear on your credit report. Um, and students interested in that support, or sorry, it will appear on your credit report and monthly repayment arrangements may be available during that six month period. And students interested in that support are encouraged to contact Alberta Student Aid. 
But before moving on, um, we would just like to take a moment to acknowledge and highlight the importance of bridging training, just based on information shared with RPAP, as well as trends in both LPN and RN hiring practices across the province, there is significant value in completing bridging training to ensure that you are prepared and successful when entering the workforce in rural Alberta. So while many BN recipients are eligible to take their licensing exam, the direct knowledge and hands-on experience provided by completing an approved bridging program is truly invaluable. We strongly encourage recipients to complete their bridging training. And as on behalf of RPAP, we will always continue to promote the educational value of this step. So to reiterate what we've covered so far this morning, uh, the application process has been broken down into seven steps listed on the screen, beginning with enrolling in an approved bridging program, all the way down to that first bursary disbursement being issued. So once you are enrolled in an approved bridging program, we welcome you to apply for BN on our website. From there, our PATH will review your application and confirm your enrollment with your post-secondary institution. If approved, your information will be sent to the Government of Alberta for a return and service agreement to be created. Once the agreement is signed by all parties, meaning the recipient, RPAP, and the Government of Alberta, we will then process your first BN disbursement as soon as possible. And again, that disbursement will be sent directly to the recipient's bank account. So we are nearing the end of today's presentation, um, but just on the screen for reference is a breakdown of the BN bursary maximums by post-secondary institution. This is a really great chart, and if you are interested in taking a closer look, the same image can be found on our website. So here, you'll notice that the $3,500 fixed incentive is the same for all post-secondary institutions, but the maximum allocation amount varies. This is largely to do with variables in program lengths, as well as tuition and fees assessed by the different post-secondary institutions. If approved for BN, recipients' bursary amounts will be calculated based on the number of terms of full-time coursework they require to complete the bridging program up to the maximum allowable. And finally, the last point to highlight here is that BN is a taxable bursary and you will be issued a T4A form at the end of the tax year. So as a BN recipient, it is very important to ensure your contact information remains up to date so that important information, updates and documents such as the T4A can reach you in a timely manner. And that is our presentation for today. That being said, um, Lindsay, I don't know if we want to stop sharing and open it up for questions now. Hi, hello, good morning. It's Karen. Um, I would just like to ask questions. So uh, before enrolling to a particular um, institution, we need another assessment. To We need to do another assessment. Is it right? Um, we're actually not involved in the application and approval process for the post-secondary institutions. If you have any questions about their application processes and what they uh, expect from applicants, we recommend reaching out to the school directly. Is it possible to have the funds available to them before probably the start of the program so that it can help that for those who are not currently not in Canada, those who are outside Canada to help fasten the process of their application. Is there anything like that, please? Um, unfortunately, not with BN. So we're not involved in the immigration process whatsoever. Um, as part of the BN eligibility criteria, we do require that international students already have study permit. Um, and in terms of releasing the funds early before program starts, we do require that you're not only accepted into the program, but you must be currently enrolled in courses for that upcoming term. So I know some post or most post-secondaries have uh, timelines with when they open course registration for upcoming terms. So it would just depend on your post-secondary and when you end up applying for BN. And I do see one question in the chat, Olivia, um, asking if there's a high chance of being hired after finishing the bridging course. Uh, given that there is a six month window to secure employment. So I'm happy to answer that. I do work with Olivia here at RPAP. Uh, we, as Olivia reiterated, the bridging program really is the best way to prepare for practice in Alberta. So we can't guarantee your hiring, but if you are applying for a position to practice in rural, it is a huge benefit to have that recent bridging training as it gives you exposure not only to um, 
the studies and the book side of it, but the hands-on knowledge and experience practicing here in Alberta. So it will definitely give you a better chance uh, and very good chance if you were successful in the bridging program to then go ahead and be successful in securing a job. So I'm I'm a Kenyan. I'm 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 also interested to join in Canada, but uh, I don't know how to do it. Is there a way also we Kenyans can join you? Sorry, um, you're asking about the immigration process. Yes. Okay. Um. So unfortunately, RPAP is not involved in the immigration process whatsoever. Um. We do recommend reaching out to an immigration lawyer for a consult. But there's also the government of Alberta has an Alberta Advantage immigration page. Um, so they also have online resources. We recommend reaching out uh, for next steps there. So can I be assisted in maybe joining? I mean, I really feel that I should join the group, but I don't know how to get get, get into, into that. I would say, Asher, if you want to send an email to our inbox, which is bn at rpap.ca, we can send you the links that we do have, which may point you in the right direction to look at those next steps. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And I do see George. Uh, hello. Hand up. George, you want to go ahead? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have an active line says with the CRM, and then I have applied for the bridging program at uh, Mount Royal University. So I want to find out, um, because looking at your eligibil um, eligibility criteria, I realize that you have to be a Canadian citizen or you have a residence in Canada, but I'm currently outside Canada. So do I qualify for the main program? The yeah, eligibility, we do require that you are a resident and currently living in Alberta. So once you've been accepted into the program and you're living in Alberta, we welcome you to apply. Yes, thank you. I just want to, like, uh, this is more on the funding because um, I'm a mom of two with a mortgage, of course, with bills, and I'm working as an accident benefit adjuster. Now I wanted to get back. I already passed my NCLEX. I want to go back on my nursing career, and I'm looking at attending that IEN program at least to help me get back. But I'm thinking I'm kind of second to having a second thought here regarding the funding because, of course, if I will resign and go into that will it cover my like i mean is there any way that you guys will gonna calculate my uh, mortgage at least to consider as the alberta student aid though or i'm not sure though like how is will those funding go so when we calculate your bn funding we do not take into account your mortgage or your personal expenses uh this bursary is based solely on uh, a portion of tuition and mandatory fees from your post-secondary institution and a set amount per term for living expenses, as well as a $3,500 fixed incentive. Um, if depending on your citizenship or your status in Canada, um, you may be eligible to apply for student loans or other bursaries outside of BN. Um, but no, unfortunately, BN does not take into account uh, those other factors. And in the chat, I see a few questions here around a cycle three of BN. Uh, I will say from our perspective, so cycle two is still open and will remain open until June 30th. We do not have a set date for a cycle three of BN. Uh, that is an active work in progress. But if we do have anything to announce, feel free to follow us uh, on our webpage. So rpap.ca slash BN, as well as our social media channels. And as soon as we have that information, it will be shared. Um, and the question about the June 30th deadline. So that is a, a set deadline for cycle two. Um, if you've been accepted and are in progress to enrolling in courses for the upcoming term, we welcome you to apply. Um, but if you have not been enrolled or accepted yet, um, please keep an eye on the RPAP website, as Lindsay mentioned, just for more information about cycle three, uh, if we are uh, given approval to, to open that. And I see one question, Olivia, from Kieran in the chat, um, asking about other programs such as a critical or emergency nursing program 
the BN bursary is only offered to students who are actively enrolled in the approved bridging programs, as mentioned. So no, unfortunately, no other programs would make you eligible for this specific bursary. Another one, um, conditionally admitted. So if you've been conditionally admitted to uh, Mount Royal, we do recommend you do your best to fulfill those uh, admission requirements so that you can enroll in courses as soon as possible. Once you have enrolled in courses, we, we welcome you to apply for BN. Um, that the enrollment in those courses, full-time continuous enrollment is a very big uh, eligibility criteria that we look at. And I see one other question from Justice uh, asking about the possibility to apply uh, for those who may arrive in Canada September 2024 or later, that would be dependent on a cycle three of the bursary program. So as mentioned earlier, as soon as we have news on that, we will share it. But at this time, we simply don't know. So we're hopeful that, yes, if there is another cycle, you would absolutely be able to apply. We just can't say that officially quite yet, but please keep in touch with us and we will let you know. Well, uh, yeah, so thank you, Olivia and Lindsay, for the presentation. I just had a quick question. Uh, just to clarify, when it comes to the partnering institutions, you know, Montreal, Bow Valley, McEwen, and Norquist. So this bursary is only through those four partners and no one else that provides LPN, like Radio Polytechnic and stuff. So yes, currently those are the four uh, institutions that have, that offer approved bridging programs. So as we mentioned in, in the earlier part of the presentation, uh, the government of Alberta sets out and determines which programs are approved for study. Um, so there are specific programs for IENs uh, designed to be a little bit shorter than the full program. Um, and to pair in another question I saw in the Q&A box, uh, most of those programs have some components of asynchronous, but they all have in-person uh, study and clinical, like hands-on clinical experiences. So it's not something that you can do asynchronously and kind of on your own time. Um, it is something that requires a, a dedicated amount of time to, to attend these programs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I see a question, Olivia, uh, in the chat from Linda saying, if I understood you correctly, means you can only apply for the bursary after being enrolled. Uh, into the bridging program at one of those schools. That is correct. Uh, you do have to be enrolled in, all, in order to receive the bursary. So if you're just in those initial stages of looking into bridging training or starting an application, you wouldn't be eligible yet. But once you're enrolled uh, and we know that you're attending, then you absolutely would be. And there is a question in the Q&A just about quotas allowed at each participating school. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have any information about that. Um, I, Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm not sure how many seats each school has for the programs, and it might depend on the term, how many students they actually uh, admit. Yeah, to the person asking that question, feel free to email us. I do somewhere in my notes have the number of uh, the number of seats in each program, at least per the last intake. So we'd be happy to share that information or if you contact the post-secondary, they could, but we don't play a role in who gets accepted into the programs. That's solely with the post-secondaries. I'm not sure if you were able to discuss this earlier because I joined a little bit later. Um, but then I just wanted to ask, once you enrolled into the program, when can you get the funding? Like, I mean, how is it like, are you getting it the the whole amount or was there any, yeah, I'm not, no if you can go a little bit details on that. Thank you. For sure. Um, so BN is uh, provided in two disbursements. So the first disbursement is issued to recipients once they've signed their return and service agreement. So that's once your application has been approved and you've signed the contract between us at RPAP um, and the government of Alberta. And so it usually takes about a week or two after it's signed that that first disbursement will be deposited directly to your bank account. And that first disbursement includes a $3,500 fixed incentive, as well as 50% of your tuition and 50% of your living costs. Then the second disbursement is issued um, upon the confirmed completion of your bridging program 
or within 12 months of you signing the return and service agreement, whichever occurs first. And that second deposit or second disbursement will be the other 50% of your tuition and other 50% of your living expenses. Um, and again, those go directly to your bank account. Um, so you kind of bypass the school and you're you're free to, to pay what you need there. I know the fixed extent, it's fixed incentive includes some funds for things like your uh, licensing fees and different uh, costs you might encounter, like a criminal record check. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. No worries. Uh, and Justice, you have your hand raised? Yes. Um, I think uh, I've received response on the question I asked, but I think I need a, a little more clarification. My situation is such that I have um, been offered admission in an MRU. I have uh, started the process of enrollment and currently registered for uh, all the courses that I'll be doing in the first semester. But I'm currently applying for uh, a student permit, which is not yet approved. Uh, in that case, per the explanations you given, can I apply for the BN or I still have to wait till I arrive in Canada? Yes, um, so the, the Alberta residency is a key component for the eligibility for BN, um, as well as holding a valid study permit if you're an international student. So if you were to apply right now and we were reviewing your application, we would not be able to approve it because you're not in Alberta and you don't okay. hold a study permit. Um, that being said, keep us posted. Um, we are accepting applications until June 30th, which is it's still a few weeks away. Um, Sometimes government can be fast. Maybe you'll have uh, the documents you need by then. Um, and if that's the case, please feel free to apply for BN before our application deadline for cycle two. Otherwise, as yeah. Lindsay said, please just keep in contact with us. Um, if you send me an email, I can also add you to a list for notifications if we do have a cycle three. Um, but otherwise, that information about cycle three will be posted to our website. So that would be the place to keep an eye on. Uh, so you're you're up to date as soon as we know. Okay. All right. Thank you. I do see a couple questions in the chat, Olivia. There was one saying I've enrolled in the bridging courses, but haven't paid any tuition yet. Can I start applying for BN considering uh, the deadline will be at the end of June? Um, you can certainly apply. However, you wouldn't be approved unless you're at a state of being enrolled in those classes. So with each post-secondary, it may be a little different as to when tuition is due versus when you're enrolled, but we'd be happy to take a look at that as part of your application. And we can discuss that directly with you if you'd like. Did see another question saying, is it possible to sign the agreement on only the tuition por portion? Uh, that would not be possible. We do the same calculation for all of the bursaries. So it does include those three buckets uh, and that goes across the board for everybody. Perfect. And there's also a question about um, paying a partial deposit for courses and whether you can get a refund. I believe that uh, would be better suited to your post-secondary institution. I I'm not sure what their refund policy would be once you've paid that deposit. Um, if you would like, if there was more to that and you need further clarification, please feel free to, to add or uh, turn your camera on if you're comfortable. Yeah, I would just add to that any discussion around payment uh, to or from the post-secondary, you'd have to discuss that with them. Uh, and if you're not sure who to contact, feel free to send us an email. And if we have a contact we can share, we'll certainly do so. Sounds good. I thinking that's now all the questions um any I'm last sorry. <laughs> yeah i just ha have to um ask more questions sorry about that um in regards to uh this program so um the the institution like for example the montreal or university or the other institution that has been mentioned here they are going to check about the eligibility process and they're going to determine probably on like how how long you're going to take the um the program is that right um i'm really sorry could you repeat the question um i'm just i'm just trying to determine how long um 
I'm just go I'm just trying to determine if the one of the institution we're going to um uh we're going to determine the 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 length of the program like if after the assessment is that right mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so um, once you've applied to the post-secondary institution, I believe they look at your list of prior education and determine what courses you, you need to take. Um, all right so there can be some differences from student to student of the courses that are mandatory to take. Um, so if, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. And also, um, if you are already an, a registered nurse and you wanted to enroll this, you're, you are are you are you all are you also qualified? Even though um, you already have the license. Uh, yes, so we Okay. don't look at whether you have a license already when determining your eligibility. Um, Okay. quite candidly, we do see people who have uh, current and active licenses choose to go back to bridging programs because of the value that they bring, um, especially with that hands-on experience in the Canadian system. That is that's very much something employers look at um, in the hiring process. Thank you so much for your time and answering my question. Thank you. I see one more question in the chat um, asking for a little more light to be shed on how to apply for the bursary. Um, so I'm happy to say when applications are open, as they are right now, you simply go to our website, which is rpap, R-H-P-A-P dot C-A slash B-N. Scroll down that page. It has all of the information we've covered here today around the program. And at the bottom, you'll see a button to go to the application and apply now. So that will outline all of the information you need to give us. And as soon as you hit submit and send in an official application, we begin approving it almost instantly. So that is how you apply. And if there's any more questions around that, please feel free to follow up in the chat. I do see one about if a couple can apply for BN. Um, so applications are for individuals, but we don't have any uh, requirements or rules about whether a, a couple could also apply. They would be individual applications and approved uh, potentially separately. Yeah, so you could both apply, absolutely. If you're, you and a spouse are both internationally educated nurses taking bridging, you would both be eligible to apply and we treat you like any other applicant. Um, there's one other question about how long do you have to live in Alberta to prove residency? I don't have a, an exact answer for that. I believe it's just once you move to Alberta, you have an address, an established residence. So you have a mailing address, maybe you have utilities set up here. Um, some people do switch their driver's license and healthcare insurance over. That would also be uh, proof of your residency. Um, but more information can definitely be found on the Government of Alberta's webpage. If you need more clarification, please feel free to reach out to us at the BN email address, bn at rpap.ca, um, and I'd be happy to do some digging and uh, point you in the right direction. Um, seeing no other questions, uh, just a kind reminder that please feel free to reach out to us at the BN uh, email address. Again, it's bn at rpap.ca. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any other questions that come up. I know we covered a lot of information today, so take some time, digest, uh, and if anything does pop up, please feel free to reach out. As well, um, Lindsay mentioned, our website has a lot of really great resources, including the BN Overview and FAQ page, as well as the BN Application Portal. Um, so please take a look there. Uh, a lot of great resources again.